Hey, how's everybody doing today? Uh, Clint the Audio Guy here. Just wanted to show you another system I set up because I was bored. Um, so I was doing some cleaning in my bedroom. And, hello. Uh, there are no dust mites in here now, by the way. Very clean. Uh, <laughs> that's neither here nor there, but I figured I had some... Uh, some audio equipment laying around so I would uh, set up a little hi-fi system in my bedroom no sense in it not being used for anything so I thought I would show it to you here's the rack I got a salamander uh, archetype rack there that's the uh, walnut finish uh, these bookshelf speakers are uh, awesome these are uh, Totem Acoustic Rainmakers. Um, these have been discontinued, sadly. This is one I'm going to miss. Uh, it's an awesome little bookshelf speaker. I uh, did a double blind test with these with a $3,500 bookshelf uh, from a major manufacturer. And I'm not going to tell you what model that was, but um, they killed them, crushed them. People in the other room were like, the second one sounds way better. You know, didn't even know which ones we were playing. Uh, and that was, they were talking about the Rainmaker. So, um, very open, the Rainmaker is. The uh, the sound stage is incredible. The bass extension is great. Uh, they just sound really good. I've had these on my computer, actually, for a number of years. Um, but I put a new... Uh, a new totem on my computer, different model. So uh, I had these to uh, set up a little hi-fi system, and in the bedroom they've got they've got plenty of bass and uh, dynamics. I mean, really, just low-level listening, little little something to fall asleep to, you know. Um, here we've got uh, this stuff is uh, old. Uh, I bought this CD player in 1995. This is a Sony ES player. This is when kind of I was introduced to Sony ES. Uh, the player still works fine. That's what's crazy. It's the CDP uh, XA1 ES. It's got something called an advanced pulse D to A converter. Whatever that means. Um, what's crazy is I bet I hooked this up to my main hi fi rig in the living room and you probably can't tell a difference. <laughs> That's what's crazy. You know, DACs have come a long way, but I could output digital out of this, send it to the DACs and the Macintosh, those ESS Sabre DACs, and I'm sure it would be absolutely fine. Uh, the player has some kind of unique features. You've got direct track access. Uh, you've got a fader, so you can actually fade in tracks, like the first five seconds of the track, so the track doesn't start abruptly. You can fade it in and out, which is crazy. You can actually delete tracks. This is a single disc player. But uh, you can delete tracks, so you can say, okay, I don't want track 3, 7, and 11 to play. So you can actually just take them off the playlist. That's kind of, kind of crazy. Um... You have, um, what else was there on here? A lot of unique features on here. Uh, you do have a uh, headphone output with volume control. Um, the one thing that's pretty cool about this is that it also has variable output. So you can use it as a preamp if you have amplifiers. So, the, um, um, I am using the variable out on here. I said, okay, well, I don't even need a preamp in here because it's got the variable out, and I'm going to send it to these monoblock amps I had laying around. Now, these monoblocks are pretty special in my history. Uh, these are King David Audio because my brother-in-law, when I was about 15, 14, uh, my brother-in-law was dating my sister at the time, uh, he works at NASA, and uh, him and two other guys from NASA uh, started they they started this kind of company where they wanted to build some amplifiers that were pretty groundbreaking for the time, and they were conferring with a guy in 
um, California, and uh, the uh, my brother-in-law thought the guy's name was Krell. Thought his last name was Krell, and he thought maybe it's the Krell from Krell Audio, right? And uh, comes to f we come to find out that Krell is actually named after an alien species from some movie. It's not a guy's name at all. So that remained a mystery for a while. Then years later, we found out that it wasn't Krell, it was Curl. Because he found his phone number in a drawer, the guy that they were conferring with on the design of the circuit boards with, and uh, it was John Curl, John Curl from Parasound and Vendetta Research and Mark Levinson. That's the guy. So um, he's the guy that's he's the JC in all the Parasound products right now. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, he had uh, some input on these, but um, so as a teenager, I would come over and uh, to uh, my brother-in-law's house. And he, uh, he's like, oh, you got to hear these, you know, because he's, he's going to show off the stereo. Uh, and he would play them and crank them up. And uh, I remember he had these DB Plus speakers and this really, uh, really high-end DAC that you weren't allowed to sell overseas because, you know, it could process, like, information, like, for a military uh, because it works so fast. But um, uh, he played these for me, and it was the clearest sound I've ever heard. Uh, and that's what started me in audio. Um, you know, I had played with, we, we had a turntable in the closet at home, and I played spinning records and stuff as a little kid, too. Um, but it wasn't until I heard these amplifiers when I realized uh, getting something to sound better was a thing and was something that I loved. So... Uh, years later, they, they shelved the project. Um, these were very expensive to produce. I think there were a couple thousand dollars to produce the castings for a pair of these. Um, <clears throat> but um, they called them the Legos, too, kind of a nickname. Because in the, in the back, they've got, uh, they've got four bumps sticking up where the capacitors, the power reserve caps are under. And it kind of looks like a Lego. And then under here, of course, is the... Uh, toroidal transformer. Unfortunately, the right one here has a problem. It crackles uh, when the bass hits. I'm not sure exactly what's wrong with it, but they are near 30 years old now. So um, I'm sure things have uh, dried out a bit, let's say. But I turned them on, and it actually it sounded good until the bass hit it hit, and uh, there's some crackling. So, um, so that's that. That's that's how audio started for me. We think these are something like 125 watts a piece mono blocks, but uh, really good current. Uh, let me just stand up here. Uh, I'm using for power strip. Right now I'm using a Surgex SA1810, I think that is. Uh, so I don't want to damage my Rainmaker speaker, so I'm going to not use those amps. They're just going to remain uh, audio decoration for me. But one of the benefits of being Clint the Audio Guy is that I've always got extra audio equipment sitting around. So... Uh, I'm going to put in the PM Kai Ruby integrated amp from Marantz. Uh, that's Ken Ishiwata from uh, Marantz. That's kind of his uh, swan song, unfortunately, now. Uh, that was uh, his last major creation before he passed away. Um, I've got the matching uh, SACD player in my uh, living room uh, in the, uh, you know, my reference system. Um, but I also have a, another Marantz, the CD6006 player, which I actually haven't ever opened yet. So that is, uh, that's going to go into my system in here. This is a little bedroom. This is an ultra-wide lens, um, by the way, so uh, I also have to hang that picture up on the wall here. Uh, that's from my dad. 
you really like the pure hell car. Pure heaven races pure hell. Um, kind of legendary in the nostalgia drag scene. Anywho, that's my uh, that's my stereo as of right now. I'm gonna get those pieces in and uh, go from there. But uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy.